Hello, my name is Mark Dolinar. I'm an applications engineer here with Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can utilize Visualize to go ahead and create a flyover animation of your particular renderings. In our case, we're gonna be working with this motorcycle that we see on screen. I've already added it directly into Visualize and gave it all of the particular appearances that I would like it to have. However, at this point in my design, I actually want to go ahead and create that animation that flies over and around the bike in order to show off particular details or areas of my particular model. In order to get started, I'm first going to want to make sure that I have my timeline visible down below. To turn this on, all we need to do is go to my view drop down menu and turn on the timeline. Once that's been added, we'll go ahead and jump into my camera section find the camera that I'm currently working in and create a duplicate copy by hitting the control C and the control V keys to make that duplicate copy. From here, I'm going to go ahead and right click on that brand new camera view and choose to add a keyframe. Now, before we do any uh, modifications to the particular view, we will want to go ahead and double check to make sure that the current view itself is marked on by this green check mark. From here, we can now go ahead and add our particular key points. Now, these key points will be dictated directly in our timeline below. And we'll see that we have both a start point and an end point. In our particular example, I'll go ahead and drag this out to maybe about nine seconds and assume that that's how long my particular video is going to be. Inside of here, I will also want to go ahead and make sure that my auto keyframing is turned on so I don't have to manually create a key every single time I jump around in views. From here, we can go ahead and position our very first key point by simply dragging it to the timestamp that we would like it to use and then rotating our model around into that correct orientation. For this first one, maybe I want to show off the engine itself. We'll notice that down below it automatically creates that timestamp and we don't have to actually worry about creating any of these keyframes ourselves. Once we've added the first one, all we need to do is simply roll around to the additional keyframes we would like to use. So maybe do one of the back of the chopper, do one of the right hand side, and then we'll go ahead and just finish it off at the very bottom of our particular view to rotate our chopper around. Once we've applied every single one of our key points, we can go ahead and see exactly how that model is going to behave in our visual uh, representation by just hitting our play and our pause button. And this is just gonna go ahead and give us a preview of exactly how our video is going to look. If we wanna ever modify any one of these individual key points, all we would need to do is simply go ahead and move to one of our keyframes and choose to modify that by jumping to that frame and then just moving the camera to a new position. Now, in a lot of cases, this works. However, it's very difficult for me to understand exactly how this affects the video as a whole. In order to do this, I can actually go ahead and jump directly into my original camera view. And we'll see that in the corner, we can actually turn on this viewport ribbon. This viewport ribbon is actually gonna show us the exact path that our camera has going around our model. Now this is color coded and the green color actually represents a fast moving camera. The yellow and the red represent a slow moving camera. Inside of here, I can actually go ahead and manipulate exactly how fast my cameras move by simply selecting on a camera itself inside of the viewport or by selecting on it directly inside of my individual frame. We'll jump over here to the right hand side of my screen and turn on my keyframe properties and down below we can actually see the ability to actually go ahead and make it longer or make it shorter at that particular keyframe just adjusting the speed that the camera has at that particular point. We'll notice right here I can actually go ahead and almost make the camera stop directly at that second keyframe so that maybe if someone's looking at the side of the bike they have the ability to go ahead and maybe represent it for maybe a second or two. Inside of this individual view I also have the ability to go ahead and move individual camera points by simply selecting on my manipulate objects menu with the camera point itself. And then we can use our reference triad to manually 
change the direction or the position that the camera is looking at directly from here. Once we have all of our camera views in the correct location that we would like, we can actually jump back into my original viewport menu with my video animation and do a quick view of exactly how that animation looks with our new changes that we've made. Now, once we are comfortable with how the video looks, we are free to actually export out the video file. And to do this, we can simply go to our output tools. And inside the output tools, we'll actually have an animation option. Inside here, we can actually go ahead and choose the file name, the file location, and what movie format we would like to use, and push OK to actually start a rendering of our particular animation. However, with that, that's going to be the end of our video. I'd like to thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel for more educational content such as this.